thank you very much for coming i thought and, uh, i thought you have a tremendous career in tango and uh, then i thought it's nice to know you better because you obviously have some really good experience in terms of travel and uh, the exposure uh, you have and uh, so just it's more of an inspiration you know what we can get from you you you, you spend a lot of time in mumbai right uh, you, you you spent uh, yes last time i was there like four months more or less four months okay 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 went there three times i see i see okay okay uh you you have been doing a lot of traveling uh, about 43 countries and uh, yeah. uh, how do you feel now uh, not unable to travel well i'm happy because i know that it's just a moment we will mm -hmm. pass through this situation i know i'm so sure and at mm -hmm. the same time i think this is a good moment for for everybody all around the world just to really think what we want to do what we are mm -hmm. dedicating our time mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. for me now i'm really enjoying now i'm with my family but i'm the same mm -hmm. time i'm really enjoying and like i'm aware of all the things i'm doing and i've done and i'm so mm -hmm. thankful to the decisions i made and also to my family that was supporting me from the very beginning so mm -hmm. i'm very i'm very happy and, and enthusiastic to keep going in the same way i i'm i'm doing i mean right. i love what i do i love teaching i love traveling dancing going to different cultures so i'm really happy of my life that's the reason mm. i'm enjoying this moment you know right, right. okay Just okay focus keep studying i still keep teaching thanks god uh, but mainly i I'm, i'm inspired you know in this mm. moment Yes. Right. So, do you, do you feel it's a kind of break? Because uh, I, I know you have been traveling a lot. I mean, you were in Seattle. Sorry, you were in Seoul uh, for a yes. festival. Then, then you were in Australia, I think. Uh, so then you were in yes. Africa. Yes. And then, yes. so how is it right now? So now that you are not traveling, do you miss it, or it's kind of break, or, or what's happening? Now? Of course, I'm not traveling, so could be like a break, mm -hmm. but. As I told you before, it's like I feel inspired, and I feel like I'm like remembering a lot of things from my traveling, and mm -hmm. it's like I'm enjoying already those travels I made in my past, mm -hmm. and the people I met, all my experiences. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like I won't say a break. I'm like enjoying what I lived, and mm -hmm. also focus on. Okay, what can I do now? This is what I have. I can go out. I can travel. I can rehearse with my dance partner. So what I can do is just focus on the things I love. Of course, I can keep studying tango on my own, training. You know, always, mm -hmm. always we need to be like inspired and training. So I'm very happy. I will say I'm doing other things. I have a lot of time for mm -hmm. training. Many things I love, and uh, and I'm preparing myself for. what will come next yes mm -hmm. so that i will keep traveling i will keep meeting my friends and people and mm -hmm. uh, so yeah it's moment to get in ready for the next that's where i feel right yeah that that's uh, that's really nice right so tell me gisela you you have many facets in your life you are a choreographer and you are into teaching and uh, uh, then you are into the creative aspects uh, like tvs and uh, shows i see that you have performed a lot so what what is what is uh, what what brought you to tango well in my family always um, i was mainly brought by my mother and mm -hmm. she was all the time like listening music in the morning just very happy and dancing you know Mm -hmm. And so from the very beginning, I really got that energy of happiness and dancing, you know. And mm -hmm. um, so I tried like many things before dancing. Mm -hmm. uh, I studied sports, like different kind of sports, like tennis, basketball, uh, volleyball, skate rolling, like many many things. But I I was never like fell, I never fell in love of this. Mm -hmm. One day. I was with my friend. It was summertime here in Argentina, and mm -hmm. she invited 
me to go to a lesson, a tango mm. lesson. She was teaching and she was my age, 14. Wow, okay. Mm. Yes. So I say, okay, yes, I join you. So I sat down on the floor watching this couple that was taking the lesson. And this couple was, they were around like 80 years old or a little mm. bit more, something like this. And when I saw them, I saw, I mean, they were embraced and they were like looking into each other's eyes. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing I remember now. I don't remember any step, any sacada, any gancho, nothing. I just remember the connection they had. Mm -hmm. So for me, that inspired me to, okay, I will start. There's something nice, lovely I'm seeing here. Something good. Mm -hmm. So then I started practicing I in the, in the neighborhood with my friends. And then I said, okay, I want to take it seriously. So I went mm -hmm. and since then I never stopped. And for me, uh, I got in, I mean, I was into tango because I was having fun with friends. Mm -hmm. I was like learning choreographies. That's the way I started learning mm -hmm. choreographies for competitions. And uh, yes, I was very happy enjoying, you know, mm -hmm. but after a year, I, I still, I don't remember how I realized that that wasn't really a uh, tango because everything was choreography and nothing was led. Right. So yeah. now I discovered a uh, school was a tango Mora Godoy studio. And I say, mm -hmm. I want to go there. Mm -hmm. So I went there, I was 15 and I was traveling to the city with my father and he was taking me to my tango lessons. And since then, I never, I never stopped. Mm -hmm. I never. Mm -hmm. So then you started uh, performing uh, at the age of 14 or, or you went to Milongas? No, I started performing, in fact, uh, because my teacher said that it was picking up very quick. So I will join into the competition. I was like, wow, I can't believe it. Not even like six months and I was already on stage. So um, mm -hmm. I performed, I think it was 13 August. <laughs> I remember wow. uh, 2003, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And I was very happy. And before, before entering into the stage, I remember I was dancing with one of the twin brothers Nicolas Filippelli. I danced with him for the first time and I embraced him. And before going to, into the stage, I was like, ah, yes, let's do it. I was very happy. And then we danced and it was amazing experience. So I say, yes, I will go on with tango. <laughs> mm -hmm. So then, then you started performing, uh, you trained for performance and... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. For like okay. two years, I was performing, performing. Then mm -hmm. I got in like salon style. Mm -hmm. And then I, I was like invited to join a company, DNI, mm -hmm. Tango, mm -hmm. uh, with Dana uh, Frioli and Pablo Villarraza. They, mm -hmm. they saw me and they say, okay, join us, our team. So mm -hmm. I was training like every day there with them all every morning. And then mm -hmm. in the afternoon, I was um, taking their lessons, the group lessons, and mm -hmm. it was like full immersion there. Right. And then companies. Then I got into castings and companies, uh, shows for Buenos Aires. And then mm -hmm. when I was 19, yes, I did my first trip uh, to Russia. Wow, okay. That was my first experience dancing in a show. Mm. So you went with a dance group? Yes. Uh, it mm. was Esquina Carlos Gardel that mm. uh, called me to, to do mm. a performance in the Kremlin Palace. Wow, okay. Uh, okay. Yes, I was like, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. I said, Mom, I will go to Russia. And she said, yes, okay, good. And my father said, no, you won't go. And my mother says, no, she will go. <laughs> so I went with permission of my parents. So I mm -hmm. went. <laughs> so what is this creative process of uh, shows and choreography? I have, as a percussionist, I have worked with uh, South Indian 
dancers and they are the really crazy very eccentric people i have met in my life so very very eccentric uh, when you were a show dancer or... yes you're right you know if you are like a performer and, yeah. and shows it's a little bit different compared to like a milonguero or milonguera the process i mean everybody has maybe a different process but for me i was like into show just learning technique you know and how to do the steps but mm -hmm. they're really I mean, and also, if you are an artist, you have to have like, you know, you have to be there and shine on mm -hmm. your way. You have, everybody has like a way, a characteristic, you know? Right. So I think I was developing mine through experience, of course, and dancing. But what I will say that changed, I mean, and made me like more mature artist was mm -hmm. acting. Acting for me, was like open like new windows, new poss possibilities, and gave me the possibility of exit um, because tango is like a small world. And mm -hmm. when I was young, everybody was telling me, you should do this, you should do that, you should look like an interesting and sexy woman, you know? So it's like very small and you have to follow that rules. Mm -hmm. But when I got into acting, it's no rules or you can create you you have to be you you know you don't have to copy others mm. so for me acting gave me a lot of possibilities that i was mm. like a lot of tools that i use for my performances mm. you know mm. and for instance one thing that every time i was told by my friends is like you have to be sexy in the show you have to look good and stand like a sexy woman, you know? And for me it was different because I was like more into smiling and happiness, you know? So I was more into comedy than, mm -hmm. than drama, you know? So for me, acting gave me a lot. And right. also my experience in the, in the shows, what I learned is a lot about the music. Mm. and how to move, when to move according to, to the music or what the director, the, sorry, director wanted. So it's like you really learn a lot of uh, like how to be a performer, a performer right. on stage. You know, you have the lighting, you have the musicians. So when you listen the piano, you have to exit. So many, many things that for me, it's like I got a lot of experience in that, like, in my early years mm -hmm. as a dancer. It's quite interesting you say that you came from a choreography, stage performance, stage background. Then when I took classes with you, you're strictly salon, and uh, <laughs> you, you want to go by rules. <laughs> 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 and, uh, but still, when, when it comes to salon, uh, you are pretty much very traditional. So how, how did the salon happen? After traveling, I went to like many countries with different tango companies like Tango Seduction, directed by Gustavo Russo. And uh, by then I was dancing with Ariel Perez. Uh, we were like traveling all around this, I mean, Europe and different countries, different city, sleeping on the bus, performing the following day, new stage every day. So it was fantastic for me. I was really enjoying it. But then I met a dancer in one of these shows I made in Paris. The show was called America. Um, and then when I met that guy, I said, wow, he was, I mean, he was traveling, but at the same time, he was like not working for companies. He was on his own with his brother. Mm -hmm. So I said, wow, this is another like possibility of traveling and performing and not just with a company, but you can do it on your own. So since I met him, he was, he, sorry, he's Enrique eh, Magana, he opened me to like new windows. And since, since then, we decided to move to Milan. So there started my career, like more teaching, I would say. And right, right. I learned a lot uh, through them and they are like very salon, they have a lovely technique. And so I learn a lot with them. I see, and okay. Since then my life, I would say, has 
as a dancer changed a lot because for me performing was just just show but i needed to get like more the tango sense not just yes. the show stuff so then i really got into salon and it was like studying coming back to buenos aires studying studying with him with his brother and since then all my dance partner that came then uh, i really want them to nice hug and walk that was the main thing and from there then if we want to do a jump or perform whatever yes but i discover what was the walking and a really good embrace you know so that's the reason then i got into salon but still I love performing. But when my students come to the lesson, where, what I see is they want to dance to go to the milonga. So when I have to teach something, I teach what people need, you know, needs a good embrace to dance clean, simple, but good. So I can't teach you like stage stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Unless you say, okay, Gisela, I want to learn this, this, and jump, and whatever, okay, in another lesson. But in a group lesson, mainly all my students, they come to refine the technique for dancing in Milonga. Right. So that brings me to the next question. Um, from what I met with you in Mumbai, as well as in Buenos Aires, you're one of the happiest person I met. And um, <laughs> so in Mumbai, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So especially when I came to Cool Chef Cafe, a lot of stress, you know, coming there, and it, it's uh, it's in it's it's not in, not really in a good location. Same thing in Buenos Aires. You teach in the downtown Buenos Aires, one of the most stressful part of the cities. Then you come in, then you see you're all smiling and um, very nice, very nice classes. So, what makes you happy? I mean, uh, every day, and how do you maintain this kind of happiness? Wow, I like the question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> difficult to answer. I think I absorbed a lot of my mom. That's what I would say. I think, but then I think I said that before. I'm very happy with my life. You know, I'm very happy of performing teaching now i'm into the designing jewelry so i'm very happy everything i do i'm i enjoy mm. you know and being an artist or being a tango dancer is not so easy as people say we are not like all the time teaching and dancing we are like doing also a lot of work behind you know promoting um organizing the tour Maybe I'm, I arrive to a new city, but I'm organizing another one at the same time. So, and I mainly, I like performing, art in, uh, acting, teaching, and not too much computer stuff. But even when I'm doing it, I try to look for a moment that I'm relaxed, I bring my mate, I drink, and I work happily. I have to be like, okay, I will do it now. So I enjoy it, even, even if I'm, it's not, the, the thing I prefer to do, but I enjoy everything I do. And yeah, mainly I'm, yeah, I'm happy because I, I love what I do. People who know me, they know that I love teaching. I know people to really become a great dancer and I give you all I have, I give it to you, to you, you know? So, um, yes. Yeah. How do you, how do you see, uh, how do you switch from, um, I understand that the, the whole dance process, uh, it, it has, uh, it involves uh, the, the 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 space, the, the the timing, the energy, and how do you how do you switch the roles from being a stage dancer to the salon dancer and uh, then to a milonguero? I don't think I I I change them. I think I have all of them in me. Mm -hmm. So it's like depending on this situation, I'm showing one side. Yeah. For instance, when I'm teaching uh, um, at school uh, with students, they want to learn like how to dance properly in the milonga or to do one embellishment or just walking. What I do, my, my performer is there because I think the way I'm teaching, I'm 
quite a character, <laughs> I would say. I'm not like just, okay, stretch, sit down. No, I'm very active. I'm like, I feel like I'm in a play where mm. I have to teach someone something. And uh, so for me, I never, all my, my personalities and all my stage and salon, everything is there, you know, but it's just what this person needs or what I have to do. Even if mm. I'm performing in La Milonga, and for me, my performance is there, my actress is there, because even if I'm just taking one side step, I'm there with everything. I mean, dancing is not just, okay, I do one step. It's connection, embrace, music, and the passion inside, you know? It's something right. that you have, you have to have that passion. Mm. It's, something that maybe is, is very hard to teach because this, you have it or you don't have it. Of course, you can develop it, of course, yes, to like be more expressive or to really have that feeling that the person who you are embracing has to feel that. It's not that, okay, I'm, I'm embracing a glass and not feeling. Sometimes happen that, you know? So it's like that person still need the process of developing that sensation just to let your partner feel it. Mm. Yes. Right. Then how is it uh, you, you taught in Tuscany? I think that's when you came to Mumbai during that time. You were teaching with uh, Stefano Fava. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So then, uh, so then you were teaching in, I think, was it in a Miguel, Miguel Soto school? Yeah. I was living by then in Italy and mm. I was exactly in Tuscany. I was, we right. were like managing <laughs> school there mm. and then we moved to Milan and we were like teaching in Miguel Angel Soto school. I see. Okay. Then how yeah. is it, uh, the, how, is, how is it teaching there in in Italy, then, then, then you are traveling and teaching in Mumbai, then you are teaching in Buenos Aires. So what's, what's the difference you find among the, the students? What, how do you deal with this different student audience? I like, I like the question. I mean, I'm very used to, now if you ask me this question, I'm like very used to arrive to a new city and say, okay, here, she's Sela, and Ariel, and we start to connect with the people. In the beginning, we talk, we explain, and all the time we say, okay, do you have questions? So through this question, it's like we can understand if people are like shy or they are very enthusiastic about asking. And um, so I would say that different, I mean, depending the culture of the country, students are very different, yes. I think if people, they are there, it's because they want to learn. But sometimes they express very much, like in Italy, in Italy, they ask, no problem. But for instance, I've been to South Africa and there it was a little more hard to make people uh, like ask. They were like more shy, but then we ask the organizer and they say, no, no, they, they are really enthusiastic. But we didn't, we didn't feel that. But maybe because they are like more shy. So it's depending the country, but mainly people are, they are there, you know? So we, I really adapt. And uh, there's always someone asking. So that's very important because if not, uh, it's like I feel, okay, I'm just giving information, but are they understanding? Uh, they like what I'm saying. So it's good when people like ask. And mm. no problem with that. I would say that people, they interact and that makes the lesson because it's very important to know what the students want. It's not just, okay, I teach you today how to walk in cross system. It's not just that. We need to know what people need, you know? Mm. Even if we see it, normally I say, mm. okay, what do you want to work? But I like to know what, what they want, even if I know what I have to give them, but it's important to listen what people need and why they are there. 
and you even went to even more conservative country like Egypt and how was the how was the experience there well it was amazing it was amazing mm. yes mm. <laughs> i really enjoyed and um people who were dancing there they were not so conservative they were like not covered <clears throat> so mm. everybody was open to to dance to embrace to to do close embrace Mm-hmm. And uh, in fact, in the, in the country, uh, that it was a little bit like, wow, this is, I need to work a little bit. I won't say the country, I will say the city. It was New Delhi. Mm-hmm. Because in New Delhi, uh, when I went there, uh, I met a lady and she was like my age by then. And I had to say hello. And when I kissed her, for us, it's very, you know, we kiss and it's okay. And she, she didn't know how to kiss me, you know? So mm. I was, wow, here we need to work a lot of, if you want to dance tango, just the contact, you know, mm. this. Mm-hmm. That's what I saw. But people little by little start to under, understand how it works, mm. tango. If you're in tango, you need to embrace, you know? It's right. just embrace for dancing. Mm-hmm. So... But I like these kind of things because people want to dance and maybe the culture is like, oh, I have to embrace. That's no good. But if they are there, I know they are willing. Maybe they need more time to understand mm-hmm. and yeah, to understand how tango works and it's just dancing, it's just fun. And once, but they need time. And I like that, you know, I like to be like a tool to, to inspire people to feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Okay, back to Buenos Aires. The, yes. <laughs> <laughs> something which I love. What I what I like about it is a city of contradictions, but the but the people I meet are very awesome. But um, what I found is the tango is in their family. And, uh, I went to Buenos Aires to learn tango, but instead I learned family values. Uh, so. The, what is it about the, the what i found the uniqueness about tango in buenos aires is the whole family supports so how how was your experience in in so do do you think that whole the tango and the the family and the, the whole is the, the culture is coming together and that i think that i feel is a sense of buenos aires what 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 is your perspective on it yes we are we are a country like we are very close to our family right mm mm-hmm. like Italy, like Egypt, like India, also in India, right? You're very, very close to family. Mm-hmm. So for me, my experience with tango, I mean, my life, it was a little bit like, <laughs> my mother, she was, she grew up like almost alone. She's from North Argentina. And when she was like 13 years old, they say, okay, Marta, you have to live here. Chaco is a province north because here it's not really safe for a young woman. So you have to go to the city, go there. So she grew up like alone and because she did good decisions, she, she had a great life, mm-hmm. but very free. She was like alone, no a mother or father to tell her, oh, you should do this or that. You know? On the other side, I had my, my father that he was here. He was born in Venice and um, A different they had the, the mother the father like more protective you know so i tell you this because when i came to my family and say wow i like tango this is amazing you know they were okay good it's a hobby i was at school by then but then when i finish school and i say okay what i have to do now i was like i didn't understand that i had to choose a career and i was just thinking of being a vet because i like animals or being an English translator, because I always loved like speaking another language like English, or tourist guide, because I mm-hmm. like traveling. <laughs> so I say, I don't know, I, I'm not sure, mom, what I should do. And I like tango, and then DNI called me to be part of the staff. So I said, mom, can I go to DNI and stay there for a year, and then I decide what I have to do, what I do for my life? And she mm-hmm. said, do you like tango? Yes, mom, you know, I like. She said, okay, go. So you take, you take one year off 
let's say. And my father was calling my mother saying, no, she has to go and study. She needs to work first and then pay her studies, like doctor or, I don't know, lawyer. I was like, oh no, I don't want to do that, you know? So after like, I don't know, three years, I went to Russia. And then my father, little by little, he started to understand that I could live from tango. Mm. But I wasn't aware. Even my mother, she didn't thought, okay, oh, she, will, she will earn money with this. No, I wasn't conscious by then. I was 17. And uh, so it just happened. But in the beginning, it was not difficult. But my, my father didn't really believe that I could live from tango, you know? Dance, okay, have fun, but he wants me to do something serious, you know. Okay, you will have a good life if you do this, <laughs> you know. Mm. So it wasn't like very good in the beginning. But thanks to my mother, she's a strong one. Uh, she supports me and here mm. I am. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. And uh, again, buenas tardes. Um, I'm, uh, another thing about what I like about the city is the, how the old people have fun, all the old milongueros. And now when I go there, I, I go to milongas where, there are, where I don't know anybody and um, uh, just, just old people dancing and it's fun to watch, especially the, the life they have, the, the fun they have. What do you think about this, this generation and, and the happiness they bring to tango? Well, there are many faces in tango world, I would say. Mm -hmm. And mainly what people see when they arrive, they're, they're, well, this is a, like a view, your point of view. And I really agree. I like, you know, for instance, mm -hmm. you come along to Argentina, you mm -hmm. don't know anybody, and you just go to a milonga, and you arrive, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. till you start dancing, and you have fun, you know. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's amazing, because you don't need to go with a group of friends. You don't need a friend next to you just to join you. No, people mm -hmm. in tango, they are mainly, they are very, they are alone. So they come into tango to meet friends, to meet a couple, uh, yeah, to meet a group of friends. So mm -hmm. this is a good thing. It's like tango embrace everybody, no matter mm -hmm. who you are or where are you coming from. So mm -hmm. this is amazing about tango. And mm -hmm. Why people is happy? Because I think they are just enjoying, they love dancing, they love dancing tango, and that's mm -hmm. the reason you feel this atmosphere of happiness and joy till the morning. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. I found the women from province more friendly. Now I can see that why you are friendly, maybe because you are from the province, but it's slightly difficult to deal with uh, people from Buenos Aires. What do you think? Yeah, I know what you mean. You mean you're talking about the porteños. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, it's mean, like dealing with Mumbaikers and uh, New Yorkers, right? Pune people are more friendly than Mumbaikers. Well, I don't know about the <laughs> When I was there, you know, I, you know, I always say I had like family in India. Right, right, I stayed right. like a few months there. So I, when I was there, it wasn't like many, many dancers. No, they were just less dancers than I'm used to see. And they were like family. They call in each other, oh, today we have the milonga, so let's see there. Or we go dancing ballroom and Latin. And I felt like a family. I felt so good. That's the reason I, I came back again, you know? And yes, yes, normally people from North or South, they are like more friendly. Not, I would say they don't have the stress of the city, mm -hmm. the speed of the city, you know? And uh, also, yeah, Porteño is not really loved all around the world. I know that, I know. And uh, maybe one way, is, one reason, I mean, is because the way we talk, I have like Porteño accent because, you know, I live in province, but all the time I'm traveling to the city, so I have the Porteño accent. And we, we talk in a way, I relate this when I was traveling and came back and I was on the bus listening. Argentinians and he said wow that's the accent we have oh gosh I said no and we sound like we know everything you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and the people from province like north or south they have other accents different to the porteño one 
Mm-hmm. And it's like more softer. They are more warm, more, more friendly, not so ego. Right. So now coming, coming back to the, 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 the situation in Argentina and today, the whole coronavirus, what, what I heard also is that whenever any economy goes down, but the tango also goes up, people practice hard, people work hard. So do you think uh, people will work hard and it, it's good for tango, the whole, the, the whole downtime right now? Well, I think mainly professional tango dancers we are facing this new problem or this new situation, I would say, and mm-hmm. it's quite new. And, right. uh, uh, but this is giving us a possibility to just be like all around the world without mm-hmm. traveling. So that's, that's good. Regarding training, I'm training on my own because I don't have my dance partner here, and, but he's okay. training on his own. So depending on the situation of, of everybody, maybe some couples are like life couples, so they are living together, they can trade together, create choreographies. Mm-hmm. On my own, I'm just trying to keep myself motivated and training. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I am creating a choreography for myself, a solo. <laughs> so no excuses. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, maybe answering your question, we will see this when this is finished. So right. there we will see all the things that came out, are coming out. Like in Colombia, I think they did a championship uh, with uh, choreographies and they were solos. And they were wearing the mask. So meaning that these guys, these dancers were performing and training during the quarantine and they were preparing choreographies. So that was amazing. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now I don't know. I just, the only thing I have is the Facebook, uh, Instagram. So this is the thing I'm just watching people. Yes, training a lot of teachers, you know, people dancing at their home. But I think this will be more clear what, what this quarantine is creating when it's mm. over. Right. Any, any particular routine do you follow to keep yourself motivated? Well, many things. I'm, <laughs> I'm training singing. Now I'm studying a little bit of clown again. I'm mm. uh, watching a lot of interviews that mm. people do to artists. And then, yeah, watching videos, listening to music. Recently, I was attending a musicality workshop. Mm-hmm. Uh, teaching also, believe it or not, it's, it's new for me, this uh, teaching online. And I really love it. And mm-hmm. I will keep this method, I think, uh, even if I'm traveling. But I want to keep this possibility to those who really want to train with me. And people mm-hmm. mainly who knows me that... I take out the best of them. So I will keep this teaching online. I I like it. I like it. I really like it. Uh, What else? I do training, yoga. uh, Yeah, many things. I keep studying my languages, like English, uh, Mm. Italian, Portuguese. Do you miss uh, Escuela de Mundial, the school you are teaching? Yes. I mean, if I have to say if I miss something particular, what I miss is meeting people who are mm. really enthusiastic about learning. I miss performing. Yes, I meet, yeah, talking with people, you know, and teach and dance. Yes, I really mm. miss that. But I'm not into, oh, I miss and I'm so sad. No, it's like that feeling gives me a lot of motivation, you know, to keep going and to be better and better, you know. Mm. So now uh, in India, there are a lot of talented uh, upcoming rising stars. Maestras, they are, um, and India have very less opportunities. What kind of inputs do you give to our Indian maestras and rising stars, um, you know, in tango to, to find a path? Yes. For me, I mean, there is no only one way. My way, I mean, my decisions made my career, but it's not the only one. But what I, I would say, yes, is to always like follow your heart. And training, of course, is very, very important. 
This is never stopping. I mean, all the time we're training. Mm -hmm. And uh, traveling gave me a lot of possibility, not just being here. But I never focus on, oh, this dance better or his master or whatever. I was really focused on becoming a good dancer, a good artist, a good everything, you know. And in fact, always I was very young between my, my dance group. Everybody was like 40 already and I was 18, 19, you know. So I always was very young and sometimes you feel like, oh, they make you feel like, oh, you're young, you don't understand anything, you know. <laughs> so many times I felt that, you know. And sometimes I was coming back home crying and nobody wanted to dance with me because I was very young and not good dancer yet. And, but I always like, okay, get up and we continue, you know. Mm -hmm. But what moved me was the, the passion of, I was confident that I wanted to dance. And, but I never thought, oh, I want to travel the world or I, I want to become a great top dancer. I never thought about this. I mean, I just was like motivated little by little. I have a casting. Okay, that's my motivation. I want to dance there. So I went, okay, I was in or maybe not. So I kept going. Then a possibility to live abroad. So when I had that possibility, it's like this could happen to anybody. But maybe. for me, it's not that I said I want to become a teacher. I never said that. It just happened through the experience. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's my advice. I mean, yes, that's my advice. You really have to have the passion and then everything will come. But we don't have to go and, oh, I want to become the great teacher, you know. It's not, I mean, you just train because you want to be a good dancer. Then people will tell you, oh, can you teach me? Then people will come. It's not you that you have to, oh, okay, I want to teach no, I mean, things will come when we are ready. Mm. Yes? Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> but I know that people are motivated and they want to dance, you know. Uh, when I was there, I was teaching private lessons to 23 students. So I when I was okay. there last time, mm -hmm. I, I never imagined that, you know. But mm. when I was there, year by year in these four months, a lot of people came private, then some ladies organizing a small group of five ladies. So it was like training. And, you know, I saw the difference. After when, when I left, I saw the difference. And those students who improve a lot, they know it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so I'm very, very happy that I could be there to motivate and to really put the level, like mm -hmm. higher level there. So I know that you, you are able to do it, but you need to like to train a lot. Training is, is very important, but not just moving around. It's just training, being conscious, what we have mm. to improve, correct, you know? Right. And you, you said about musicality, music. What, uh, what orchestras do you like? Music that I like, well, I like mainly all the tango orchestras. But I mean, to perform, to teach, it's different than the material I, I choose. Mm -hmm. When I'm teaching, I'm more, no, I'm more, I'm very traditional because I want people to really understand the, the music from the golden area mainly. That's very important. And uh, then when I have to perform, well, I like, like more, more stuff. Yes, I, like I mean, you could be a song, a tango song, and I dance it. <laughs> yes, uh, of course, there are songs that maybe don't, don't inspire me. So maybe if I'm in a milonga and I don't, maybe I don't like the song, I prefer not to dance. I listen to it, it's okay. But I really want to dance that music and songs that motivates me, you know, that moves me. It's not just gymnastic and I dance automatically for many, many hours. Mm -hmm. I choose. I choose what I like. Right. Okay, uh, Gisela, thank you so much. And it really helps uh, when we have teachers like you coming from Buenos Aires with a lot of experience and you bring a different flavor. 
uh, not the porthenia flavor but also the provencia flavor yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> right so jisela uh, just uh, the last topic tell us about your interest photography jewelry and uh, you you said you are, you are running some jewelry with your name right well this yeah. tango jewelry is quite new i started um to 2017 so from italy i went to india and after my trip to india i say okay i will go back to buenos aires to reconnect with myself and to the things i love because i was on a little bit like oof many things going on so i need to like go back to them start again uh, so in buenos aires i met a dance partner we created a lot of stuff we were into like clown stuff many things that i was like very inspired mm -hmm. and also i met a man who he was a sculptor and he gave me a few ideas to develop my career not only as a dancer but like doing other stuff too mm -hmm. um he was pedro ariel and he gave me the idea of doing like jewelry tango jewelry so we were investigating and he was designing uh, he was doing drawings and so i started then unfortunately he passed away but he gave me like all his friends who do the jewelry and the designer i mean everything so since then also i i'm just creating designings and uh, send it to people i, I have like five people working <laughs> on, the, on the final piece and uh, i'm so happy and inspired and i've been like taking the jewelry uh, on my tours uh, so and people are loving it that also gives me a lot of motivation to keep doing it and um, for me it's like tango i never thought oh okay i would do this to earn money no i just did, i say wow i can put my passion also here and i don't depend on someone i can do it on my own and um, for me this gave me a lot of joy because when i go to a city i meet people and it's not just the tango lesson but they have also a jewelry you know a, a tango and it's something that i give with happiness and love so it's like i'm giving something positive also to, to to the people so i'm very motivated i'm i'm very happy uh yes thank you so much so what uh, what is your exciting life full of uh, art and uh, uh, music singing uh, creativity right so thank you thank you for sharing that so do you do you sing tango well um you know i don't really feel like singing the, the lyrics of tango okay. um, because what i feel like singing i'm more into like musicals i'm more like more like a happy person and more like spark mm -hmm. and maybe in the future when i'm like older i will feel like tango <laughs> but so far no not yet i have two two more questions for you what what do you what do you think uh, what, what do you like in tango what do you dislike in tango oh, what i like is the possibility of meeting people all around the world and doesn't matter where are you from who you are we just embrace and dance and doesn't matter the level it's just about enjoying you know mm. that's the thing i like then the thing i dislike is when people are like they expect i'm expecting you dance better or i'm expecting uh, you to, i don't know you know regarding the levels it's just enjoying that's the the thing i like mm. and uh, to, when we dance tango in the milonga the idea also we dancers we need to watch we need to watch who is willing to dance who is not willing to dance so we need to learn to read the body language because sometimes this thing also i don't like is when imagine you know, i am a man and i want to dance with this lady 
So I go and, hey, do you want to dance? And maybe, <laughs> you know, she maybe she was like with a mobile phone or she was talking to a friend or looking to somewhere else. So the idea is I'm like, how can I say? I'm going against her energy. The idea is I have to approach someone who is like open for dancing. What that person is not looking at you or not looking at that man is because she doesn't like the song, she doesn't want to dance. And for us ladies, if we want to dance with someone, we have to be very clear. Yes, I want to dance with that man and that dancer. So I had to look, yes, I had to be like here and not like, you know, like this. Mm -hmm. Body language says everything. So if we really learn to read the, the body language of the dancers of the atmosphere in the milonga, we will enjoy it more and we will be like more happy instead of, uh, oh no, she said no to me or he came, I had to say no, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, like being like more aware mm. and not just what I want, my ego, oh, I want to dance, yeah. no, just, you know? presence i'm here and i read i feel the energies and who is willing to dance so if i dance with someone who is willing to dance and happy to dance that song that will be great so do we see uh, gisela in future as a melanguera teacher or, or or you will be continuing performing like maria neves uh, or, you know, until the end yes yes i want to dance my whole life and uh, teach teach, I could teach my whole life, then performing a stage, yeah, of course, like, the idea is to take care of the body, just to keep it fit. I want to be surrounded by art all my life, that's for sure. Right. Gisela, you were in, in India three years ago, I, I'm thinking, that's when I, that was, I was a beginner in dance, you know, in tango, you made me walk for hours and hours just to get my walk right, um, which I'm still walking, actually. So I'm, I, my question to you is that, when you came to India for a long time, which was almost four months in, in, in Mumbai, I think it was four months in Mumbai, uh, you're, you're the foundation of many, many teachers. Why did you not come back? You helped me a lot. I have other friends that helped me a lot. And you know, I'm just talking with those friends. We talk sometimes. I talk also to Nayan, eh, Danu. And you know, sometimes it wasn't the moment because maybe it was another teacher visiting there. But I always want uh, to come back to India, you know, because I really enjoy being there. I was happy there. So um, I really want to come back, of course, and stay. I don't know if this time I can stay like for a month. I don't know. But we can consider this uh, to the future, the near future. Why not? Yes. Uh, I, I love teaching there. I felt very good. People really appreciated my, 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 my work. Like you, now you say, you, I keep walking, you know. And uh, I know that's a good formula to make good dancers, you know. And yes, I want to, I want to go back, of course. So let's, let's keep talking and we, we can organize it. So in your in personal life, I have a question for you. Where would you like to settle down? <laughs> so maybe uh, when I fell in love. <laughs> but... Um, I know that I always be like traveling, even if I have a family, but I have to have my space for traveling because I love it. I love to, uh, to visit my old friends like you or my friends I have in Italy or in Asia or in America. So I always will have that. But if, if I have to choose a country now, I don't know. I don't know even if it's Argentina. I don't know because I want to travel. So I don't feel like settled down yet. But it's not something I have to decide. I think it's like tango, you know? Tango just come to us and then maybe, oh yes, I want to teach. Yeah, but that moment we have to wait and go through many paths till I really get into that. So right. I, I don't know yet. I, I love many countries and uh, every place I go, I like, I really enjoy, you know? There is no a place I say, I will never live there, no. <laughs> But I think the place would choose me. And my last question to you. Suppose you have children tomorrow. Would you like them to be tango dancers? Of course, yes. And actors and performers. Dancers. Yes, of course. <laughs> Singers. <laughs> yes. Lovely to see you.
Yeah, Santosh. Mwah. Gisela, uh, I think tango, we often hear that, you know, it's not such a happy dance, you know, by it's, it's tragedy, it's sad. It's like, you know, it's so many different emotions, like nostalgia and uh, of longing. And like, you know, that's how it started. And that's how it's also seen in music and lyrics and poetry, everything. But in times like these today, the new generation in Buenos Aires and across, I mean, how do they relate to all these emotions? I mean, because they haven't experienced any of these things in their life. People who dance and who are not professionals, Milongas here is full of people all around the world. It's not just Argentinians. In fact, tango survives thanks to all the people that come, or all the people that keep learning and dancing, you know? It's not just us. You know, and some of the dancers, they don't understand the lyrics. If I put a tango song, maybe now you don't understand the lyrics. But doesn't mean that you cannot feel or, or dance, yes? But uh, what I feel, professional dancers maybe get into this, okay, this lyric is talking about this, so we can express this. It's someone who really wants to work deep on something or a material or a song that has. But in general terms, what I would say, people are more focused on technique. This is what I see and not into the feeling. So this is the, the thing I'm struggling. I'm, every time I'm traveling with, with Ariel, my dance partner, it's like we need to focus on people really feel the music. This is the most important. And once you feel, I mean, then I cannot teach you what you feel. Maybe you are embracing someone who the embrace is fantastic and he's working amazingly. And maybe you are listening to a melody that is a little bit sad, but that person is very happy because of the sensation, you know? So what's wrong, you know? I cannot say it's wrong or oh, he's smiling, you know? No, he's fantastic. He's being pure and truly there. So regarding sensations, I cannot, it's not grown on bad. Of course, tango mainly is more sad and like stories with sad ending, you know? But imagine you put an instrumental, not lyrics, no? and you listen to that song and you feel like, wow, I, have, I feel like dancing, you know? So, and you are extremely happy. So you can smile or maybe not, or you are serious. I mean, everything is good, you know? Uh, for me, uh, I, when I have to perform, I choose the songs. We choose it, you know? And it happened to me that maybe I was performing a song that we were talking about killing someone and I was smiling. And I was watching that video one, two, three times and I said, wow, why I'm smiling, you know? Mm -hmm. But I knew I was dancing, for instance, no, I was dancing in Egypt. It was my dream. I was embracing Ariel. He was listening to music amazingly. I was done. I was, I was extremely happy. So I had to express that. Why I have to put like a serious face because uh, I was told that tango is serious. No. You know? I guess maybe probably the dance changes as you age and as you see life differently. And maybe you can't relate when you're a young person, you cannot relate to such depth and to such emotions. You know, you like, you just want to have fun. And, but yeah. Yeah. Thanks for your answers. Yeah. If you... Yeah. Yeah. I think also with the age, of course, we are like more mature and we change our way. Uh, yes, of course. Yes. But yes. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm depression. I have suffered also, but also, no, I know how to create a character. So I know how to create like a sad character or a happy one. So it's depending on the mood, you know? It's not all the time I'm, I'm like dancing or we dance like with a smile. It's depending on the moment, you know? For me, it's like being true with your feelings. When you are true with your feelings, that's the right way. But you have to train to express your feelings. So that's what the people need to focus more on. Listening the music, really listening. It's like, I don't know if you like, guys, Bollywood music. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's what I thought. I love it. So when I listen to Bollywood music, I don't understand it, but I feel like, wow, this is, you know, I love it. You know? I was, Depends, I remember, uh, 
-hmm. I was in a wedding in India, in Bombay, in a wedding, and they were dancing Bollywood. And I never took a lesson. But because I did a little bit of belly dance, I was dancing. And then the bride came to me and said, wow, you're a dancer. You know, I was so happy. And I was transmitting. I was transmitting because I was like possessed by the, mm. by what I was feeling. So that's the, what people need in tango. You know, not focus on the sadness or, or happiness, but just focus on, oh, I feel this. I don't like, I don't dance. I wait till the next song. Yeah. Thanks for the answer and your time. Thank you. you remember the food in India? You remember because you, I know you love the food in India. We hope to get you back. Um, we've already discussed about this uh, while we are talking to you with Nayan. And we hope that you will come back soon. Yeah. Yes, yes, I love to. I love to. Her favorite is called dosa. Dosa. <laughs> dosa. <laughs> remember that. Yes. <laughs> Nayan, <laughs> do you remember the big dosa? I still have that picture. We'll, we'll work on getting you back to Mumbai because it was really a great training for a lot of people who want, want to take tango also. Um, so we'll hope for the best. But this, yeah. this pandemic has to be over so we can, we can do this. It'll take a little while. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Amazing. It'll be a pleasure to be there with you. You are, uh, you are my family. I always say it. I don't know if it's recorded in, in another place, but... I, as Kalyan was asking me, no, Milonga. Milonga has like different faces, you know, different like, aspects. But where I fell in India, I didn't feel this in, in, in any other part of the world. Because there I felt like a family. Going to the Milonga, I felt like a group of friends, you know. And so nice to see you with the same infectious energy that I remember. And uh, we'll see each other soon. Please come soon to India. Yes. I love to. Thank you. <laughs> Good night.